This is a course in physical science, so let's start by defining the term. What is physical science? Well, it's a study of the natural world, the physical world. You see that in the, in the term there, physical science. And it's a science, which means that the theories are tested scientifically. In order for a scientific theory to be considered valid, to be considered correct, it has to match what is observed in the real world. And that's the essential aspect of a scientific theory. A scientific theory is considered true or false based on whether the experimental evidence supports it or falsifies it. So physical science is just a science or the study, scientific study of the physical world, the natural world. And we'll look at a lot of different topics. Physical science is very broad and these are some of the topics that we'll be including. We'll look at motion and forces. And these ideas, motion and forces, were explained effectively by Isaac Newton back in the 1600s. Here's a good example of forces causing motion. This is the Apollo 15 rocket. This is one of the rockets that went to the moon and actually took people to the moon and they landed on the moon and walked around and came back. This entire rocket didn't land on the moon. Um, all of the main part of the rocket was expended. Just this little section up here went to the moon and just a tiny little piece of it landed on the moon with two guys and this little tiny triangular piece up at the top is the only part that returned to earth everything else was spent in the process of the mission but they did these back in the uh, 19 late 1960s and then in the 1970s they launched these rockets I actually went down to Cape Canaveral when I was a kid my family went down there and we saw Apollo 16 launch so pretty exciting what's going on here is force and motion as the rocket exhaust is expelled downward out of the rocket it exerts an upward force on the rocket. It's a lot like a balloon. When you let air out of a balloon the air comes out one end and the balloon is forced in the other direction. It's the same principle here. It's the law of action and reaction which is Newton's third law of motion. That's one of the things that we'll be seeing in this course. And the force there causes the rocket to accelerate upward. We'll also study sound waves and light waves and electricity and magnetism a little bit. All of these ideas, and you can write this down in your notes, all of these ideas are part of what we call physics. And later on in high school you'll take an entire course in physics. We'll also look at a little bit of chemistry. These topics here are all part of chemistry. Chemical reactions and atoms and chemical bonds and how atoms bond together to form different materials. Here's an example. Uh, this picture shows an oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. And what these symbols mean here, they mean that the hydrogen atoms are just a little bit more positive than the oxygen atom. The oxygen atom is a little bit more negative. That's what the negative sign means. And we're talking about positive and negative electric charge, which we'll cover a little bit in this course. Inside a water molecule, and that's what this is, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen, and you've probably heard the expression H2O. That just means water. Two hydrogens and one oxygen, and there's a picture of it. There are electrons as that make up part of these atoms and the electrons spend a little bit more time over here near the oxygen atom than they do near the hydrogens and since electrons are negatively charged the oxygen atom becomes more negative that's what that negative sign represents and the side of this molecule where the hydrogen atoms are becomes a little bit more positive positive. and you've probably heard that opposites attract so the positive side of this molecule is attracted to the negative side of another molecule and that's what's represented by this line right here that is what we call a hydrogen bond that's pulling those atoms together that's just one little example of one of the many things that you'll study in chemistry how these atoms interact and why they do the things they do and those are some topics we'll be looking at in this course if you look at these topics these would all be considered part of what we could call earth science. 
the study of the earth and the processes that go on on the earth so geology and rocks and minerals geology is really a whole separate field you can take an entire course in geology a lot of times high schools offer a course maybe a one semester course or an elective course an optional course in geology and you can certainly take college level courses in geology and on beyond college there's a lot of geology to study um, continents and plate tectonics is something that we'll take a look at in this class too and here, here's a diagram of the plates of the earth's crust and we'll see a little bit of this in the very first chapter if you were to take the earth which is a sphere and unwrap it and make a flat map it would look something like this and you'll recognize here this is the United States right here but you see this boundary here represents a plate of the earth's crust so this plate up here is a section of the crust the outer layer of the earth and all of these plates are actually moving around very slowly and where they bump into each other or slide past one another that's where you get earthquakes occurring these plates are scraping against each other and that causes an earthquake or sometimes you get volcanoes occurring these boundaries are where there are cracks between the plates and sometimes some of the lava underneath can be forced up and that's a volcanic eruption and these are called tectonic plates the sections of the earth's crust so that's one of the things we'll be looking at in this course also rivers and oceans surface processes such as the things that go on in the weather and speaking of the weather here's a picture of Hurricane Hugo you can see this is the east coast along here this is Florida down here Hurricane Hugo was a really big really powerful storm that hit Charleston South Carolina hit my hometown in the 1980s that was just devastating came in with 140 mile an hour winds huge storm you can see right here it's bigger this the storm system itself is bigger than the entire state of South Carolina my mom actually knows a lady who is vacationing in the Virgin Islands um, out in the at, off the coast here and um, Hurricane Hugo plowed through the Virgin Islands and completely ruined their vacation so they got on a plane and flew home to Charleston and then Hurricane Hugo plowed through Charleston so this lady got hit by Hurricane Hugo twice which is kinda of funny in retrospect it wasn't funny at the time it was just a devastating storm at the time but weather and weather systems is one things one one of the things that's part of the study of physical science and we'll study some topics in astronomy of the earth and the moon and the sun and why for example why the moon has phases or why there's an eclipse that blocks out part of the moon how the the relationship of the position of the earth and the moon and the sun cause it to appear the way it appears and causes eclipse to ha eclipses to happen at certain times and we'll study uh, the solar system the planets in the sun and the, the stars in the galaxies here's a phenomenal picture from the Hubble Space Telescope of a galaxy this isn't a painting or a simulation or a mock-up this is an actual photograph taken by the Hubble Space Telescope of what they call the Sombrero Galaxy and it looks like this glow what's glowing there in the center is really billions and billions of stars what you could imagine as what looks like little tiny pieces of dust or haze in there each little piece is really a massive star burning it's just huge and very far away and we just see a haze and a glow but it's really billions and billions of stars making up the galaxy so those are just some of the topics that would be included in physical science and you should be able to see that all of those are parts of the physical world the natural world um, biology is also part of the natural world but that's generally considered a separate category people tend to think of the physical sciences and the biological sciences so the physical sciences would be physics and chemistry and then these other topics geology astronomy and the biological sciences would include biology and also things like medicine the study of um, medical techniques and procedures so we'll be taking a look at a lot of these topics in physical science and that's what you do at this point in your academic career in junior high and high school you look at a lot of different things and we'll only scratch the surface there is enough material to study that you could make an entire college major out of any of these topics when you get to college you typically spend four years in college and you start to specialize your studies for example when I went to college I majored in mechanical engineering and physics and so when you finish four years of study and you concentrate your studies in this area you get what's called a degree 
and that's basic that basically certifies that you know something you've completed a course of study of a significant breadth and depth in in these topics or in this particular topic in my case mechanical engineering and physics you could go to college and spend four years just studying geology or just studying chemistry you could major in chemistry or major in geology there's enough material you could spend four years at the college level just studying physics and still not study all the physics that there is to study so now you may not want to, to major in physics or chemistry some people prefer to major in other things such as history or liter literature and those are great topics to study as well but it in, in the junior high level and the high school level you want to study a broad variety of things and understand what you're good at and what you like and then later on you'll choose something to specialize in but keep in mind though that even if you specialize even if you decide to major in something completely different something like history or literature it's still good to know all of these things it's good to understand the world that we live in and to be able to appreciate it and interact with it and interact with other people and discussing and thinking and figuring out things about it so that's essentially our goal in this course. My goal is to effectively introduce you to a lot of these topics in physical science.